So now let's talk about the systems approach to managing diseases and pests. The systems approach is a holistic uh, approach to problem solving and it's based on the notion that the only way to fully understand a problem is to understand all the contributing factors. Let's consider the goal of producing healthy, healthy plants. In the traditional approach, a grower produces and uh, tests the plants and um, then the plants are tested by uh, inspection before, right before they're shipped. So this would be an endpoint inspection. And it's a reactive approach based on detection of diseased plants. Now, in a systems approach, the grower would instead correct unsafe practices to ensure that plants could not become contaminated. It's a proactive approach based on prevention. And so instead of endpoint inspections, the whole production system may be audited or certified to ensure compliance. Now, hazard analysis of critical control points, or HACCP, is one type of systems approach. It's a risk management tool that can be applied to uh, lots of different kinds of processes, such as manufacturing or food processing. Um, HACCP is a very prescribed set of steps for identifying hazards of contamination, um, critical control points, we'll have more on that in a moment, establishing critical limits, monitoring procedures, uh, corrective actions, record keeping, and verification procedures. And this notion of critical control points is very important. A critical control point would be the best point, step, or procedure at which significant hazards of contamination can be prevented or reduced to a minimum hazard. You can think of this as uh, a critical control point as a key point of vulnerability. And as I mentioned, uh, HACCP is widely used in the food processing industry. In the U.S., uh, orange juice, seafood, and meat are all processed according to HACCP requirements. And some hospitals also use it. Uh, as well as pharmaceutical companies and cosmetic companies to prevent contamination in their products. The Australian nursery industries also used it in a program that they call Biosecure HACCP. Now we wondered if the systems approach could be applied to nurseries to reduce phytophthora contamination of nursery plants. So Nick Grinwald and I conducted a research project to identify critical control points for Phytophthora in nurseries. We thought we could use this knowledge to develop best manage management practices. We tested four nurseries, sampling each stage of production every two months for three years. The soil, the plants, the water, the pots, and the potting media. We collected uh, about 800 Phytophthora isolates and then identified them to species based on their DNA. So here's an example uh, of, an, of a flow chart, a production flow chart for one of the nurseries that we worked with. They started with tissue culture plantlets or woody cuttings, and um, they, these went into the tissue culture plants went into a growth room, and then a main propagation house. Uh, in the case of the cuttings, they went into a propagation house, and then. Um, were uh, planted or, or moved into greenhouses or potted into number one pots, one gallon pots, or they were moved into a can yard and either sold or potted up. Uh, some of them went to the field and were potted up again uh, before being sold. Cuttings were taken from plants in the can yard. And then, of course, we sampled uh, the irrigation water their used containers, and their potting media. So in this next slide, um, you can see where we found contamination by Phytophthora indicated by these red lightning bolts. So they were doing a very good job in uh, the early part of the production phase, but their plants became contaminated as soon as they were moved into the greenhouses. So. Um, or, or were uh, moved into a can yard or were potted up. 
And you can see that their potting media was infested, their used containers, and their irrigation water was also infested. So the critical control points in the nurseries included things like flats of plants that were placed directly on the ground, in hoop houses where phytophthora was splashed up from the soil uh, onto these flats, the contaminated used pots, uh, splash dispersal from infested leaves, uh, contaminated recycled irrigation water, uh, pots set directly on the ground, and pots set on very poorly draining mesh fabric where um, Phytophthora was able to move through this water and also be splashed up under the plants. So the results of this study uh, from all four nurseries combined, for all three years combined, um, show the sources of these different Phytophthora isolates. First of all, we detected uh, 16 different species of Phytophthora. Um, most of them, most of these isolates were associated with the plant, with the plants, but we also were able to isolate Phytophthora from the used pots, from the ground on which containers were set, and from the irrigation water. And in the irrigation water, if we look a little bit more closely, um, we find that about 40% of the Phytophthora isolates were plant pathogenic species. And about 60% of the isolates belong to taxa that are mainly saprophytic. That is, uh, these are Phytophthora that live primarily on dead organic matter and aren't necessarily pathogenic to plants. Well, once we knew the critical control points in these nurseries, we could then advise the nursery growers on best management practices to correct the problem. For example, if container plants uh, were becoming infested after putting them on the ground, then we could advise growers to, eat, to raise containers off the ground uh, or otherwise prevent splash dispersal. If their irrigation water was contaminated, we uh, let them know that they ought to treat their irrigation water before use. So the critical control points really um, drive the development of best management practices. Our research findings helped us uh, develop a manual which then was published by the Oregon Association of Nurseries. And this, is, uh, this manual shows growers how they can implement a systems approach to manage pests and diseases. This manual uh, is available for download at no cost from the Oregon Association of Nurseries website. And uh, you're welcome to go to this site and download a copy.